right, uh, then welcome everyone for the last session of today. And I'm very excited to have Pedro here, who's going to talk about uh, KGTK and reusing Wikidata and how it can help you do that. Uh, Pedro, please. Okay, you know, thanks uh, Lydia and Leah for the invitation. You know, it's great to, to be here uh, and talk about uh, the work that we've been doing on reusing Wikidata. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, did a lot in one way or another, uh, plus a ton of students who were not actually listed on this slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here's kind of my take on reuse. So what, what do I think when people say, well, you know, I want to reuse Wikidata. I, I think of some kind of function that uh, takes Wikidata as one of the arguments, their inputs, and maybe some other files that may be in all kinds of different formats. And it does some kind of transformation and it produces a data set that I then use in a downstream application. Then, you know, I mean, you could have kind of the you know, the, the application could be your know, question answering, some analytics, you know, whatever it is. But uh, I think of it as, you know, we take the, the public Wikidata, we create a data set and we use it in an application. Uh, and, you know, maybe even the Sparkle endpoint of Wikidata kind of fits here. It takes the JSON, you know, the original Wikibase, you know, constructs a function of it, which is the Sparkle endpoint. It's a data set can be reused. Next slide, please. And a common use case is really to just reuse Wikidata without combining it uh, with other data sets. And you know, today, I think I'll focus mostly on that, even though the tools we have actually support the, the sort of bigger use case. Uh, also, I, I want to say, you know, feel free to interrupt me with questions. If you have any, we'll adjust the timing uh, to sort of finish on time. So I, I don't mind. I prefer if you actually, you know, make we make it as interactive as possible. Okay, next slide. Uh, so two use cases. Uh, let me go to the first one. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so here's a, an example. Uh, so there are lots of publications in Wikidata, and I want to create a co-author subgraph. Uh, and so, you know, I have here all my publications are the little blue circles, and then they have P50 links to authors. And what I want is a new graph where I can do, say, citation analysis and say, you know, who, who works with who, you know, basically do kind of a a social network of authors. So I want a new graph where you know, I keep my authors as nodes and I create edges between them if they published together. There's a co-author graph. And I put numbers as qualifiers on the edges to record how many publications they co-authored together. And then I get to do all kinds of interesting analytics mm -hmm. on co-author. So this is an example of reuse. Next slide, please. Uh, and so here's, uh, I actually did this and created, use KGTK to create a visualization. And this is what it looks like. Uh, and it was very surprising to me because I thought, okay, I'm gonna get like Hollywood and maybe Bollywood and, uh, and Germany is like a big chunk of this. And I was thinking like, holy cow, really? You know, most of the co-author graph is uh, German. And so, yeah, that, there it is. That's what the data has in Wikidata. Uh, and your know, Czech Republic appears quite prominently, US, of course, you know, Hollywood, and then France and a few others. And so, you know, this is kind of a reuse of the data to analyze, you know, what kind of actors exist in Wikidata and so on. So I didn't do it for, you know, authors of papers. I did actors in movies. Next slide, please. So here's another example. 
I want to create a graph about movies and books that exist in Wikidata. And I want to know about the people and organizations and places involved in the movies and the books that are in Wikidata. So the way I would do this to reuse this data and to do my, my work is I would say, okay, I want the subtree of person, subtree of organization, places, creative works, everything that's below it, you know, the connections between them. Uh, so those are kind of the blue edges. And then the pink ones are, are kind of the, you know, going up the class hierarchy all the way to entity. And this is what I would like to have so that I can do my analysis. You know, I don't want chemical compounds and rivers and things like that. Uh, and so that's kind of all these other little circles in the periphery. So next slide, please. So at the end, I want this graph. So I want to reuse Wikidata to build this graph and then so I'll do my own work, uh, give it to my students so they can work with it and so on. It's not as big as all of Wikidata. Uh, next slide. And so then, you know, I maybe I want something smaller, like, Okay, from that graph, I want really the graph centered around Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I want to start with Arnold and kind of go forward a few hops and then just grab everything about Arnold. And so we did this for a tutorial so we could have a graph that looks like Wikidata, but it only has uh, you know, 58,000 items. And it's so easy. You can put it in your laptop, work very quickly with it. Next slide, please. And so, you know, we have our own browser. And so here's browsing the ISWC tutorial graph around Arnold Schwarzenegger. And what's very cool about it is that at first you think you are in full Wikidata. <laughs> so you, you browse Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's all the information about it. And it's only after a while that you start exploring that you kind of get to the edges and say, well, no, there's a lot of stuff missing. Well, you know, the graph is like 1,000th of Wikidata. Uh, okay, next slide, please. So, so we do this, so we created this knowledge graph toolkit more or less for this kind of use cases. So next slide, please. So, and it's because creating subgraphs of Wikidata is hard. So I, you know, I, there's been a lot of work on this. And uh, the way I think about it is I, I do want to specify, I don't know whether I want to specify what I want or what I don't want or both. So I want to say, you know, I want actors, uh, but I don't want stars and chemicals and proteins and publications. And then there's stuff that I don't know that I want, uh, but is closely related. I don't want to, re it's hard. That's why it's hard. But I want the thing to be coherent. So I, you know, if I select nodes, I want to have all the classes and super classes and property definitions and qualifiers about everything that I choose to put in my graph and the labels and so on. It turns out doing this is hard. It's kind of really completely infeasible using the Sparkle endpoint. Uh, next slide, please. So this is what we, you know, KGTK is for. So KGTK is really a comprehensive toolkit to manipulate knowledge graphs and you know, Wikidata has been kind of the focus of everything we've done. Uh, so you can import Wikidata, you can import other things and you can, you know, we have a, a long list of commands, uh, but we have sort of transformation commands, a lot of them to do union, intersection, query, filtering, lots of network analytics. Uh, so you can do page rank, connected components, all kinds of centrality metrics, paths, and we also do embeddings and lexicalization. And then you can export this back into the same format and sort of put it back as a mini Wikidata in a sense. 
or Sparkle or you know, Elasticsearch and so on. Next slide, please. And so the idea is that we implement F as KGTK pipelines. Uh, so all our transformations are basically pipelines of these commands. Uh, next slide, please. And so why use KGTK? So, I mean, I kind of asserted that it's a cool toolkit with lots of commands. Uh, so we did some evaluations uh, and uh, compared to the public Sparkle endpoint or the Sparkle endpoint run, running on a local server without with a 24 hour query timeout, timeout limit. So the first use case is you know, get me the frequencies of all the first names of people in Wikidata. Uh, you, know, you could say, you know, I'm gonna use this for you know, tuning my entity resolution. Uh, class instances, I want a, cla a count of the instances of every class, including subclasses. Uh, film instances is the same, but just for films. Author network is you know, the, the one I explained. Cancer network is author network for papers about cancer. Uh, ULAN identifiers is a use case of, uh, I get a file with you know, thousands, you know, 100,000 ULAN identifiers. I want to look them all up in Wikidata. Uh, DBpedia spouses is a use case where we got all the people in Wiki, in DBpedia. We found their URI for the spouse as recorded in, in DBpedia, and we wanted to look them up in Wikidata. And so the cool thing, or you know, the story is all these queries time out on the public uh, Sparkle endpoint. And KGTK running on my laptop can do all these queries much faster, much, much faster than Sparkle on a large server uh, with you know, no timeout. Like you know, this author network uh, example takes a, a little bit over an hour on my laptop. It did not finish in 24 hours on Sparkle. Uh, even counting the names is faster on my laptop than it is on the server. So, I mean, this is what you know, we built KGTK for, this kind of expensive use cases that you want to run uh, to create analytics and reuse the data. Next slide, please. So what's the KGTK data model? So the data model in KGTK is essentially the data model in Wikidata. So you have nodes and you have statements. Uh, so you have like a word, Terminator 2 has a word, best academy uh, sound editing. And then the blue ones are the qualifiers. So you can have edges on edges. So every edge can have another edge. So it can act as a subject of a new edge. Uh, and we show those in blue. So if those little orange circles are identifiers for the edges and they can be used as subjects of new edges. Uh, next slide, please. And so we represent this in a TSV file uh, where we have subject, predicate, and object. And we have one more thing, which is an edge ID. That's the first column. And so edges can have IDs. And so uh, you see on the right, a representation of this graph in this format. Uh, and so you see the first ID that you see is T4. Uh, and T4 is an ID of the edge that says that Arnold Schwarzenegger was a cast member of Terminator 2. And then in the next line, we say that, uh, you know, uh, we give a qualifier, say that the role of that, of Arnold Schwarzenegger in that movie was to play Terminator. Uh, same with Linda Hamilton. So, uh, and this model actually is starting to become more popular. So there's a new database called Millennium DB that also uses this uh, formalism. 
And the cool thing is it kind of encompasses both RDF and property graphs in the same model. Uh, next slide, please. And so in KGTK, all KGTK commands take these TSV files as input and then produce these TSV files as output. And so it's like a knowledge graph in and a knowledge graph out. Next slide, please. So that means we can compose these commands into pipelines to do very sophisticated transformations. Next slide, please. So here are some examples. I won't dwell over it. Uh, so the, on the left, you see the command for creating text embeddings. So you just invoke text embeddings on, say, all of Wikidata, and uh, you let it run for you know, two days, and then you'll have text embeddings for every node in Wikidata, uh, similar for graph embeddings. There's a command called filter, which is kind of like grep. Uh, and you can so sort of filter the triples by, you know, I want all the triples that have cast and gender, uh, and then it just produces that. And, you know, like all good grabs, you can use regexes. Uh, and then, of course, there's a, 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 a query language. So we don't use Sparkle. Uh, our query language is modeled after Cypher for Neo4j uh, because we think... Uh, you know, people like Cypher much better than they like Sparkle. Uh, you know, that's evidenced by the huge popularity of Neo4j. Uh, and all my students, given the choice, always use Neo4j in preference to Sparkle. So we decided to support uh, Cypher. Next slide, please. And so here's an example of text embeddings. You know, I did a small graph about alcoholic beverages and then use the, you know, clustering to show that the text embeddings and the graph embeddings are kind of reasonable. Uh, you see the beers and countries and wines kind of clustering together, mixed drinks and so on. So the embeddings do work. Next slide, please. And so here's an example of pipelines, you know, that little red symbol slash is how we can chain commands. And so here I'm importing Wikidata, creating a subgraph of the P463 edges. Then I do some cleaning and then I compute page rank. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's just an example. Next slide, please. Uh, and so here's the query in Cypher that uh, creates the, the co-author subgraph in about one hour on my laptop. Going a bit slower, so I, I skip it, but you know, it's just this much will create that, sub that subgraph and it'll run for an hour and create a pretty huge file. Uh, but you know, it has all the counts Turns out there are some authors that have 396 papers together. Wow. It... <laughs> Next slide, please. Uh, so summary. Uh, so you can create soft, so sophisticated subgraphs using KGTK much faster than Sparkle. Uh, and it can do a lot more than just query. You can do all kinds of network analytics, embeddings, and so on. Uh, so we invite you to come and give it a try. Next slide, please. So I want to close with kind of my thoughts on reuse challenges. And so these are kind of the four things that I think many people care about. Is the data correct? Is the data up to date? Is the data complete? And is the data skewed in some way? Because if I'm going to reuse the data, I really want to know the answers to the quest these questions for the data that I'm reusing. Uh, so next slide, please. So is the data up to date? So here's an example that I came across. I looked up Heineken and looked up the chief executive officer. And uh, you know, there's a discrepancy between Wikipedia and Wikidata. Wikidata is out of date. Uh, the 
CEO is this uh, fellow Dolph Van den Brink since June 1, 2020. So not all data is up to date. The question is, you know, how often is it not up to date? Uh, next slide, please. Is the data complete? Uh, and so, so IMDb has 8 million movies and TV episodes and about 11 million people about these movies. Wikidata has uh, you know, 316,000 instances of film recursively. So you know, a small fraction and 9 million people total. So a lot of the people who are in IMDb are not in Wikidata. The question is, you know, if I reuse Wikidata data, what am I missing? Is it kind of missing the less famous people or, or what? So this is, I think, kind of the key question for us. Next slide, please. Is the data skewed? So looks to me like the film data is skewed uh, because I mean, no offense to Germany, but I think Germany is overrepresented in the film data in some way. Uh, and uh, other very big movie industries like the one from India doesn't seem to be well represented. So, I mean, this is just based on sort of coloring this graph and there's a KGTK command that produces this graph. Uh, and, you know, uh, this is, an observation of kind of when we reuse data, things that we need to think about. Next slide. So I would say, you know, is the data correct? I think for Wikidata, the answer is yes, almost always. Uh, is the data up to date? Uh, not as frequently as it is correct, is my sense, but no, I don't know to what extent is the data complete? So there have been papers about this. Some classes are very complete. Other classes are not. Is the data skewed? I think people are starting to look at this problem. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of skew, uh, which is really coming from which communities are more dedicated uh, to put data in Wikidata, and I think this causes skew. Uh, and so maybe for films, there were dedicated editors that created bots that put in a lot of you know, film data from Germany uh, or France, but uh, maybe not from India. Uh, next slide, please. So I think as a community, if we really are trying to help people reuse Wikidata, we need to develop methods to characterize these things, your know, correctness, freshness, and completeness. So when people come to reuse the data, they kind of know what they're getting into. And they can sort of say, oh, this is appropriate for my use case, or no, maybe maybe not and so uh, i think this is really kind of a call for action to the community to work on this uh, next slide please so i'm just thinking like what would i like to have uh, and so like you know i'd like a class profile that has kind of a completeness report for every class and says so, you know is are you know I have all the instances, I have instances, you know, how complete is this? Do I have all the instances? You know, what kinds of instances do I have? Property completeness, you know, are most my instances fully described and what about them is described? A data skew, you know, what is missing? What is overrepresented? Data freshness for the classes, you know, are my classes kind of the instance is mostly up to date or not. You know, I, this may vary by class. Similarly, I'd like to have property profiles, like, you know, for the statements. You know, when when uh, when something has multiple values, 
how complete is the list of values? Like, do I have all the CEOs of a company or all the spouses of someone? Uh, do I have qualifier completeness? Do I have like the start time and end times of my time sensitive property? So, uh, and data freshness, you know, can I get a sense of is my, is the data that I'm seeing up to date? And so I don't have answers to these questions. I have questions. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, next slide, please. So, so this is it. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, Pedro. That was super interesting uh, to get some insights into um, views of Wikidata as a reuser and also learning about the very, very useful tool to better understand Wikidata's data and work with it. Um, I think we can now turn off the recording and then I will get to the questions in the Etherpad. And um, maybe you can answer some of them. So we have a question here that asks, how big is the file for the analytics compared to the graphs in Sparkle? Does KGTK need more space for the same analytics or is it comparable to Sparkle? Okay, so when we convert Wikidata to KGTK format, uh, the representation is much more compact than RDF, if this is what you are asking, uh, because we don't need reification. Uh, and the other thing that uh, you know we make possible is to subset the data right away. Uh, so we, for example, segregate all the labels and descriptions and all this of multilingual data into multiple files so that if you're interested just in a specific language you can grab all the claims and then all the labels and in the language that you want and we notice this makes a huge difference in the database sizes that we build uh, because there's a lot of space that goes into storing all the multilingual data. Uh, but, you know, in, you know, I think uh, the ratio of KGTK statements to triples is close to 10 to 1, or 1 to 10. So I think, you know, if I measure correctly, there were like 9 billion triples when we uh, downloaded and uh, a while back, and that was equivalent to about 1 billion KGTK statements. Cool, thank you. Then the next question we have here. In the table that compared the execution times of KGTK and Sparkle, it is shown that KGTK on a laptop runs faster than a Sparkle query on a local server. What makes KGTK so, uh, run so much faster than Sparkle? Okay, so yeah, that's a good question. It's a couple of things. Uh, so one is kind of following from the previous answer, which is that uh, it's much more compact. So when I run these experiments, I don't have all the multilingual data in there. Uh, and so because we can partition the wiki data into about, you know, we partitioned about 30 different files I can, you know, I have qualifiers, I have items, you know, quantity files, time files. I can selectively load only some of them into my database uh, and the database can be build different indices for different files. And so it can take advantage of kind of the quality of the files in, in, in SQL. And the other thing is we pre-compute for instance, uh, subclass closure or superclass closure. So P279 is a big performance uh, problem in the Wikidata Spark or endpoint. And so what we do in KGTK, we pre-compute all the superclass closure for every class. And so, and then this is loaded as another KGTK file. And this makes like, I mean, this makes a hell of a difference. I mean, it's just huge uh, because it's a single lookup and so many queries use this P279 star. So, so this is the other trick. We can solve 
compute some intermediate products that we can then index into the SQL database. We use SQL Lite and ask it to build specific kinds of indices uh, for you know, quantities or qualifiers, like date qualifiers. We can build indices on the date qualifiers, and then every date query on qualifiers becomes much, much faster. <clears throat> Thank you. That is super useful to know. Then the next question we have, um, what would be the workflow to extract, merge with other data sets, and then export back to Wikidata? OK. Uh, so I mean, we do this all the time, actually. Uh, so uh, so when so we, we take the KGTK files, and we you know, use the subsetting commands to extract what we have. A very common use case is to use the external identifiers to do linking with external data. We did this with Getty or DBpedia. We use this on Wikipedia URLs in, in Wikidata. And so we run these joins, and then we generate the external data set as TSV files in this same format. Uh, and you know, if we need to, we create new properties by just mentioning them. Like, you know, I had P author, and I don't need to. I mean, I just mention it in a file, and it becomes a property. And then I load everything into. I mean, I can put in files and then give it to network analytics, or you know, load it into SQL and run queries inside the Cipher query. So we translate Cipher to SQL. And so, you know, the typical workflow is really a Jupyter notebook that runs individual KGTK commands in the cell. So I can see all my intermediate products that I'm kind of doing the right thing. And then it just builds up. Uh, and then we have a command to, for instance, convert a KGTK file into the RDF format into basically the JSON representation of Wikidata, which then we can convert to Sparkle. And so if we wanted to kind of put it all the way back into a Sparkle endpoint that's uh, compatible with the Wikidata software, uh, it can be done too. That sounds excellent. <laughs> the next question we have then is, uh, what is the updating cycle of the KGDK data? Is there a direct sync? Uh, no, so that that uh, that we do only uh, sometimes, depending on our customers. <laughs> so, uh, so right now the the wiki, the raw wiki data import from the JSON file into KGTK format takes about uh, you know twenty four hours, uh, and you know we split all the files. But then when we construct all these derived files, you know, and we construct a lot of them, page rank, you know, degrees, uh, the P279, that takes another two days or so of processing. And then embeddings take about two weeks. Uh, so embeddings, we're not computing at a good cadence because it's very expensive for us. Our goal is to do this every month uh, but we haven't done it. Uh, so if you are interested in our dumps, just send me an email and I will give you access to our Google Drive that has the, the full dumps of what we have and the embeddings. So just to clarify, you're starting with the Wikidata JSON dumps and then process them in this yes. way. Yes. yes. And then there is a last question in the Etherpad, which is, is the Cypher implementation identical to that of Neo4j or something custom for Millennium DB? Uh, so, so we call it Kypher because it's, it's slightly different from Cypher. Uh, so, so Kypher is both a subset and a superset of, Kypher is a subset and a superset of Cypher. Uh, so we don't support the full syntax of Cypher. Uh, so for instance, uh, we don't have path queries inside 
our implementation of Cypher, which is you know a, ba a big difference, a, an important difference. Path queries we do with uh, another library. Uh, but it's a superset in the sense that KGTK has this notion of files. Uh, so you can partition your large knowledge graph into files. And the extension allows the Cypher query to, to target specific files. Uh, and this is what gives us that enormous performance boost. So I can say, you know, I can have items and qualifiers or, or you know, I can build my own custom files for my application and load them into Cypher. And then the query can index, index into different files by just a prefix. So to say, you know, match, and then you give the file name colon and then the Cypher expression. And so this is our superset. Uh, but this, uh, you know, uh, the regular kind of, uh, you know, how they call it, graph art queries is the, exactly the same. We use their we use their parser for uh, you know the, the the cipher, you know Python parser is we reuse it in our code. So to that extent, it's very very similar. Excellent. That brings us to the end of the questions in the Etherpad. Thank you so much.